Okay, in this video, I'd like to derive a, an expression for beat frequencies. So beat, beat frequencies essentially result when you're adding two waves of the same amplitude but different frequencies. And I'm not going to talk about the, the physics of, of beats, that's, that's not what I'm doing in this video, just, just the proof. So, as I said before, in terms of these proofs, these are aimed at somebody doing uh, university optics, okay? Uh, wave optics, so you're, you're familiar with the manipulation of exponentials, compli uh, complex exponentials and some trigonometry functions. So the first thing I want to do is define our two two frequencies or two our two waves. So I'm going to define my first electric field E1 equal to E01, which is the initial amplitude of this electric field, times the complex exponential of K1. It's it, that's its wave number times X1. That's its result or its um, displacement factor minus omega1 T1. So omega1 is the uh, omega1 is the angular frequency. Of, of the the first wave and then we have similarly e2 is equal to e02 times the complex exponential positive complex exponential of k2 x2 minus omega 2 t and what we, what we want to do here is add them all right so the first thing I'm going to notice is that we're saying that these are of the same amplitude so as a result e is equal to e1 plus e2 first of all well that's that's clearly what it is now these are linear systems, so that, that's, that's the point, okay? The next thing is we're going to have that E01 plus E02, uh, that's 02, is equal to twice E01. We're saying that the amplitudes are, are, are equal, okay? So we're saying the same amplitude. That's the point of these beat frequencies. They are of the same amplitude. So let's add our two electric field vectors and get the following. We're going to get that E is equal to E0. Now I'm just going to say it's no longer E01 and E02, just pick a common one, I'm going to call it E0. You need to multiply that by the following. Now because I'm just going to pull that out, okay, so we're going to have the exponential or the complex exponential of K1, X1 minus omega 1T. And we have to add to that the complex exponential of K2, X2 minus omega 2T. Alright, and close off that bracket there. So... Now, the next thing we're going to need to do is manipulate this complex exponential. And if you've done a small bit of work on these, you know that we'll say e to the i k x minus omega t is equivalent to saying cos of k x minus omega t. Okay, and why are trigonometric functions equivalent to complex exponentials? That's something which I'm not going to do in this video. I've done it in a previous video, in actual fact, where I said I showed exactly how to uh, get trigonometric functions out of a complex exponentials. So the point is here that we can we can actually we can substitute in. So we're going to get e zero again outside of the cosine of k one x one minus omega one t plus the cosine of k two x two minus omega two t, like so. All right. Next, we go to page, I think it's 18 of the new log tables, I'm not too sure, but you go to your log tables and you'll find an expression somewhere that looks something like this. The cos of u plus v is equal to the cos of u times the cos of v plus the sine of u times the sine of v. Let's apply that to this. So, sorry, we should, all, sorry, excuse me, I need to add another one, that the cos of u plus the cos of v is equal to twice the cos of u plus v over 2 times the cos of u minus v over 2. In actual fact, this one here is the expression we're going to use. So let's apply this bottom expression in black here to our expression, expression in blue. And we're going to get the following. That the electric field is equal to the initial electric field amplitude times two times the cosine of, now we need to be careful here, so I'm going to do it in a different color, k1 x1 minus omega 1t minus k2 x2 minus omega 2t divided by 2. And we need to multiply that by cosine of k1 x1 minus omega 1t plus k2 uh, x2 minus omega 1t. Alright, let's see now, divide that by 2, 
and close off my bracket. Just I know I know it looks a bit complicated there, but believe me, when you write it on a paper, that'll make perfect sense. So I've just applied this to my long-winded long-winded expression up here. All right. So I'm now going to say that the positions are the same. X1 is equal to x2. Okay. Because these are two, they, these are two waves which are superposing. So we're going to say x1 now is equal to x2, and as a result, I'm just going to say is equal to x. I'm no longer going to give it a subscript. All right, and of course, time is the same. But that's, that's kind of a, that's kind of a given. So what do we get as a result of that? We're going to get the following, and it's going to be a bit of a pain to write, but I'll try my best. E is equal to e zero outside of. To, in actual fact, I'm no longer going to write cos, I'm just going to write C, a big capital C. That's that's cos. Two cos, and cos of what? It's going to be the cos of K1 minus K2 over 2 times X. Okay. And I need another bracket, which I should have put in at the start. Wow, the brackets are everywhere. Okay, just need to be careful. I just need to be careful, that's all minus omega 1 minus omega 2 over 2 times t close off that bracket and we need to add to the, or multiply that by another cosine so a capital C and another bracket again for this one like that okay so we're going to have the following we're going to have k1 plus k2 over 2, um, okay, that's times x, and we're going to have negative omega 1 minus omega 2 over t over 2 times t, and that's going to be closed off with my red bracket, and finally closed off with my black bracket. All right, so second last line, we're very nearly there now. The second last line. So I'm going to make the following substitutions. I'm going to say that k1 plus or k1 minus k2 over 2 is equal to k bar. I'm going to say that their sum um, will say k1 plus k2 over 2 is equal to k sub m. Omega 1 minus omega 2 over 2 is equal to omega bar and omega 1 plus omega 2 over 2 is equal to omega sub m. Okay, and if you've heard of them, you'll know I'm talking about a, uh, a phase velocity and a group velocity. Some one of them is modulated and one of them isn't. Finally, the last line. When we put all of this, when we just put those four little substitutions in, okay, they make the thing look a whole lot easier. E is equal to E0 times. It's going to be 2 cos, it's going to be in here, it's going to be k bar x minus omega bar t. Multiply that by the cosine of k sub m x minus omega sub m t, like that, and close that off there. One of them will be a group velocity, one of them will be a phase velocity. Alright, and uh, I know that looks kind of painful, but to be honest, actually, once you sit down and look at it, they're, they're not too bad. So thanks for watching, please pass it on to your friends, and subscribe to my channel.